Hi everyone, I just wanted to mention a, f a couple of brief applications of our previous video, which is talk. Uh, and I know there's a lot on this slide, so we'll go through it step by step. But basically, this is a picture of a model car, not a model car, just a small car with motors and little wheels and, and tires, but not a real car. So let's say this is a motor. And the motor is attached to an axle, which is just a rod and it could be of metal. And that's attached to a wheel. So what's happening is the motor is forcing the wheel to turn around so that will move the car. And there's other wheels that I haven't drawn and other motors. Uh, all right. So that's what's happening, basically. Now, what's happening is the motor is providing torque. Why is that? Because it's like a force, but it's forcing the wheel to move around. It's twisting it around. Um, so whenever something is twisted or turned by force, then that's actually torque. So let's say the motor is forcing the axle to move around uh, this way. Okay, so it's spinning it around and the wheel has some friction with the ground. That's how it's, it's gripping onto the ground and that's actually how it's moving. The wheel is basically pushing the ground this way to the left. And that will, that will make sure that the car moves forward. Now, that's good friction, isn't it? When we have the wheel gripping the ground and pushing on the ground... Because if it didn't grip the ground, the wheel would just turn, but the car wouldn't go anywhere because the wheel would be sliding over the ground. That's not good. So we need a bit of friction here. Now, the thing is that there's sometimes bad friction as well. Here, because... Now, this is a really big problem with some of these model cars. If you don't design this section correctly, uh, you'll have a problem because... The car, the whole car body uh, is resting on the axle because it can't rest on the ground because otherwise it would be scraping along the ground. So it's resting here. Uh, and what's happening here is there's some bad friction because the heavier the car is, the more there's going to be friction kind of right here. Uh, and that's bad because, okay, let's say the motor is moving the wheel in this direction. Let's say that's clockwise. Uh, this friction will be trying to stop that motion. So it will be actually providing a force in the other direction. And what that actually creates is a torque. So there's a good torque from the motor. That's moving the wheel around. There's a bad torque slowing the motor down. And that comes from the friction. So this bad friction leads to a bad torque. And this is called a load torque. And you can see why that is, because it's really ca caused by the, low, the heavy car pushing down on the axle. Okay, so this load torque, I'm going to show you a graph. And this will show you how motors provide torque and we'll get into motors later on but um, so let's say so what we've got here really is a graph of load torque on this axis and the motor speed on this axis so if now and we've got a line here so over here what's happening is the motor speed is very high. Can you see that? So the motor can... It's possible for this motor to spin really fast, for, for a motor to spin really fast. Now, that's when there's a very small load torque. So if I'm just holding a motor and I plug it into a battery, it will start spinning and it will start spinning very fast. But if I put the motor into a situation where there's some... 
it's attached to a wheel and there's some bad friction slowing it down. What's going to happen is we'll go further down this graph and the heavier your car gets, what happens is the load torque is increasing going down here and that leads to the motor slowing down. So you can see that uh, the point over here has very high a very high load torque. So let's say there's a very heavy car that you're trying to uh, that you're trying to move, and what happens is the motor just turns very slowly, which makes sense. You would imagine that if you um, it would be harder for the motor to to turn because there's so much load torque slowing it down, so much friction as well. And that will just slow the car down a lot. And that will happen if you've got a heavy vehicle, a heavy car, or it's badly designed, so there's a lot of friction because the design is not good. And that's why you have, by the way, that's why you have things called bearings. I don't know if you know it. Well, if you, if you know the fidget spinners, they have a bearing on them. It's a terrible drawing of a fidget spinner. They have a bearing on them, which uh, means that there's basically no, f very, very little friction, not much at all. That's why it can spin for so long. Um, so that's why we have bearings and we can design our cars a little bit better with bearings. And what they are is just, um, let's say the axle goes through here and it goes through a whole uh, a case with all of these little marbles called ball bearings and then the outside of the case is attached to the rest of the car. So this is the axle in here and the rest of the car is on the outside and what happens is the axle can just spin really nicely inside of here uh, with not much friction at all and that's really really helpful. Uh, for making sure that the speed of the motor can still be quite high because that will make that will mean the load torque is smaller so uh, also if you if your car is going uphill the load torque will be higher or if it's towing something the load torque will be higher okay that's a lot of information probably at a pretty high level so hopefully you understood some of that um, if you didn't understand all of that, don't worry. There'll be lots of opportunities for you to understand it later um, in other different places. And you could also rewatch sections of the video if you if there's something you didn't understand and you want to watch it again. <laughs>